He has some nice brand new boots. Okay, so I want to know what the gentleman's name was that built the ark. No, 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 no. Here's a bonus question. How many people were on the ark when God flooded the earth? Anybody know that? Eight. There were eight people that survived the flood. God bless those eight people. And we're all descendants of one of those eight. God bless you. Let me grab my sermon. I want to pray first. Everybody, everybody that can hear my voice, please bow your head in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne in humility, Father. We love you and we appreciate your great gift, your great gift of life, Father, and your great gift of salvation. We love you and we wish to do your will every day in our lives. I pray that everybody that hears my voice is blessed by this word, Father, that comes from my filthy mouth to their ears. I love you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And everybody in agreement says, Amen. Amen. Truck. You guys see the truck every week. So I was riding in the truck and I had my sermon. And there was this old Bible that was under the seat. So my sermon, my sermon is about sin this week. Can everybody hear me back there? My, my sermon is about sin. So I picked up this old Bible, must have been 10 or 15 years old, that pastor had in there. And I, it was already open to a page, and it was open to page in Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 says, And your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. This is talking about my father. Talking about my father and what our sin does to him. Did you know that God can't be in the presence of sin? So when Brother Michael sins, he hurts his father. He hurts Jesus. He hurts God. He hurts the people around him. When I sin, all things go wrong. So I want... Okay. So, so I want to... I want to talk a little bit about what happened last week, because last week was pretty special. Who, who saw the sermon last week? Did you all see the sermon? My, my brother brought a table and a gavel, and he put on a mock trial as if it was the end of time. At the end of time, Brother Michael's going to stand in judgment, and God's going to judge me for my entire life. Every second in my life will be judged. Everything that I've done, everything that I've said, I will have to answer to the Father. So my brother got out there and he did a mock trial. And he asked all of you that had sin to raise your hand. And if you wanted forgiveness, to cross to the other side of the line. And it was beautiful because many of you did. Many of you realized that you have sin like I do. You raised your hand and then you said, I want forgiveness for my sin. But you see, what the world won't tell you, what the world lies to you about, is that it's okay to have that sin is that it's okay to live in that sin. But that sin is not what you live in. Wages of sin is death. But the wages of sin is death. It will kill your soul. Don't worry about they that can kill your body. Worry about he who can kill your soul. So when you sin, you have to think about the Father. You have to repent. You have to give up your sin. You see, he put you on trial, but the world puts you into a jail cell. And they keep you there with your sin. They tell you, look, you're a sinner. You're never going to be anything different. That's what they told me. They said, you're a sinner. You can't change your life. And that Satan whispers in your ear. And he says, Michael, I told you. Michael, I told you this is what you were. But he's a liar. You know why? He was a liar from the beginning in the garden. He lied to Eve and got her to sin, you see. And that's how he makes his way in the world, by lying to you and me. But I have news for you. You are so close to the kingdom of God. You, the world throws us away. Why do you think these men love you so much? Why do you think that is? Why do you think they come down here every Saturday and love you so much? Because you represent the kingdom of God. Not the world. You do. We who are broken... We who are broken are the ones he comes after. It says he'll leave the 99 to find the one that's lost. That's me and that's you. Can't you see? Turn your life towards Jesus. That's the best thing you can do to this world. To turn your back on this world. 
Give up that sin. Give up that hatred. Give up those things that the world wants you to have and carry with you. Give those things up. It, it tells us in Genesis 4 and 7, he tells, God tells this to Cain. It says, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. He was telling Cain, look, either you turn to me and you do what's right by God, or sin's going to rule your life. You have to make your mind up. I can't make it up for you. I can love you, but I can't make you stop sinning. My words are supposed to make you want to stop sinning so that you want to stop. I can't make you stop. Nothing I say can make you stop sinning. But I pray to my Father that you stop, that you give it up, that you throw the world away and turn towards God because He will bless you. He'll love you in every way. You have to hate sin in order to love God. I can't stress this enough. When you turn from the world and you feel the love of God, you'll know that the world hated you before and they hate you today. You are the kingdom of God. You represent that for us. Why, why do we resist Jesus? My brother talked about this last week. Because in his trial, he gave you another chance. He asked you to raise your hand and say, look, I've got sin. How many people in this line know that they're sinners? How many of you have sinned? I have sinned. I'm a sinner. I am filthy. It tells me in the scriptures I'm a filthy rag. That I'm not worthy of God's love. But you know what? God loves me anyway. What does that say about God? What does it say about God that he loves me even though I'm unworthy? That's real love, brothers and sisters. That's real love. I want to leave you with one thing. If, if you listen to nothing else I said today, I want you to know that God calls to you from eternity. He wants you to come back to the garden. He wants you to be with him. And sometimes in this world it's so dark that you say, I'm just going to continue to do what I'm doing anyway because the world's already broken. But you know who the light of the world is? You are. You have the responsibility to be the light of the world. I have the responsibility to be the light of the world. That means I spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I tell people that the Messiah has come. He died on the cross and he rose from the dead for my sin. He became my sin and he went back to heaven. And you know what? Here's what the world won't tell you. He's coming back. And when he comes back, when he comes back, brothers, we're all going to wish we had loved him the way I'm asking you to love him today. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, and I pray that all of you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to raise your hand with me today. Who wants to give their life to Jesus? We're going to get a, minute, we're going to get a pastor to come and pray with you. We're going to get somebody to come and pray with you and love you. And he's going to tell you exactly how to give your life to Christ. Because that's the only thing that's worthy in this entire world. Everything else is filthy trash. I'm going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in humility, Father. I love these men and I love the fact that they listen to me talk about you. And they lean into you, Father. I want to pray that they do your will, Father, and only your will. In Jesus' mighty name I pray.